Hi there everyone, today we're going to look at um, the equation of a straight line. Now the equation of a straight line has various different um, elements to it. Um, so we're going to break it down into three different elements. So you're going to start off with looking at something called the y-intercept. So basically where a, um, a line crosses um, the, the y-axis, then that's pretty much it. Um, so we're going to look at some examples and, and then try to kind of form it together. Hopefully by the end of the lesson you'll understand what, what each part of the equation of the line is. Um, and what all that kind of how that kind of comes together. All right. So the y-intercept, like I said, um, every straight line graph has an equation in the form of y equals mx plus c. All right. So that is one format. And if you look at some of my other videos, you'll find actually it's not the only format of an equation of a straight line, but it's the one that we often see at GCC level, where you've got y is equal to um, the gradient times x plus c, and that is where it comes across the y-axis. And it's an easy way. It's a nice way to show uh, when we're looking at a graph, when or you know, what what it looks like, where it is, and how to kind of put it together. All right, so you'll see that an awful lot. But it's not the only thing, and it's not the only way to find an equation of a line. But of course, it's the one that comes up most often. All right, so the y-intercept, um, when we're looking at that particular equation, is the value of what we call c. All right, the c at the end, the number at the end. Okay, uh, so then that is the value where it crosses the y-axis. So let's have a look at some examples to find the value of c. And again, all we're looking for. Let's not overcomplicate it, is where it crosses the y-axis. Okay, So just so that we are very clear in terms of axis, hopefully you know what these are. Um, this one is the x-axis, the one I'm highlighting now, and then this is the y-axis. Okay, So that is the y-axis. Right, so without further ado, uh, all I'm looking for is to find the value of c, so where the red line crosses the y-axis. Okay, So where does it cross? Well, it crosses that value of 2. So the value there, uh, for this case, the value of c is going to be 2. All right, we're not looking for the full equation at this point, we're just looking for the value of c. So the answer for that one is 2. Straightforward. Yeah, um, looking at this one, um, so again, we're looking for where it crosses the y axis. And so where does it cross the y axis? Well, it crosses it there. Um, so that value for c is going to be minus 1. All right, and then finally, let's do one more. So where does this one cross the y-axis? Well, it doesn't cross a, a nice whole integer in this particular case, no whole number. Um, it crosses at minus one and a half by the looks of it. So that's going to be our y-intercept. That's going to be our value of c. Okay, right. Now, the only purpose of that is really is, is in order to form an equation of a line. All right. So we need the value of c as part of that kind of process. So that's all it is. Okay. And let's move on and let's look at the gradient. Now, the gradient... Um, is the value of m when I was looking at that, that equation. So we've got y equals mx plus c, um, and the m represents the gradient. Okay. So how do we work out the gradients? All right. So we work out the gradient is it's, it's, it's to try and pick two points on a line, and then make some kind of right angle triangle for, from it, um, and then calculate the vertical height divided by the horizontal height, or sorry, horizontal length, I should say. All right. So let's take this as an example. All right, so again, we, this will relate to the equation of a line eventually, but really all we focus on is, is how you figure out the gradient given the line. All right, so last time we looked at the, the, the way it crosses the y-axis, so where it crosses the y-axis here is going to be minus 2, but now I want to figure out the gradient. So how much it goes up divided by how much it goes across, okay? And it doesn't. it's not going to be where I've just put my cursor at all, all right? It's not going to go up there and along there because it's going to end up halfway along, and that's not ideal. So what I'm really looking for is, like it says here, pick two points on the line. Now, I suggest you pick two coordinates that appear on the line, all right? So pick two points, all right? So you can see from the graph, it's chosen this one and this one, as opposed to here, or here, or here, or, or here, anywhere in the middle. It's picked a coordinate 3, 4, and a coordinate 0, minus 2. So we've got two good coordinates, all right? It's then suggested we make a right angle triangle from it. So in terms of that, that way, all right? Okay, so we've got basically a right angle triangle there, all right? I'd have gone particularly probably that way around, but it doesn't really make much difference. Um, right, so we've got that one there and that one there, all right? Right angle triangle, all right? So to, to work out the gradient, what we're going to do is, is divide how much it goes up divided by how much it goes across, okay? So here we go. So calculate vertical height divided by horizontal length. Now, for me, that's not specific enough because it's not just about a specific height or a specific length. It's how much it goes across in a positive direction um, divided. By, sorry, how much it goes up in the positive direction divided by how much it goes across in the positive direction. And of course, that matters 
because you might get a negative gradient. It might go down, all right? Um, but this one doesn't, all right? So how much does it go? One, two, three, four, five, six. It goes up six. There you go. And how much does it go along? One, two, three. So it goes along three. So there we go. So the gradient would be six divided by three, which is two, okay? And we can see from that it's got a positive gradient, um, so it's going up, so so I'm happy with that. All right. Right, well, let's have a look at this one. So this is where I have this slight issue in terms of when people say vertical height and horizontal length, because when I follow that kind of same process, when I'm looking for two coordinates, and if I looked at this one specifically, I could say, well, that's a vertical height and that's a, that's a horizontal length. So surely I've just picked those two numbers. Well, no. All right, because hopefully you can notice that this graph goes up, upwards and then this graph goes downwards, or this line, I should say, goes downwards. So this is not going to be a positive gradient. It's going to be a negative gradient. So when I put my little triangle in here, I am looking at, yes, I'm looking at this, this vertical height, but it goes down at this particular point. All right, it goes down and then across, whereas this one went across and up. Now, I suggested you probably went the other way, up and across, but of course, this one goes across then up. This one goes down. Say it one more time, down and then across. Okay, so this one has got minus five and five across. And of course, that's going to have a massive impact in terms of when I put the gradient values in. Well, minus five divided by five is going to give me a gradient of minus one. All right, when the signs are different, it's going to give me a negative answer, all right? So gradient is, is minus one, all right? So be very, again, very clear what it is that you're trying to figure out and what it is you're trying to do, all right? So we've seen the y-intercept. We've now seen the gradients. So let's try and bring those kind of things together to find the equation of a, of a complete line, okay? Um, so what we're after is trying to value, find the value of gradient and trying to find the value of C, all right? And those numbers just need to be substituted in. All right, those two numbers. All right, so the two techniques that I've shown you need to be substituted into that formula. All right, so let's have a look so we can figure this out. So to find the equation of line, all right, so let's find, um, I don't know which one I find out first. Well, C seems to be the, the easiest one. So where does it find, where does it cross the axis? Well, it crosses there at minus one. So C is minus one. Okay, so that gives me the value of C over here. So C is minus one, so I'm happy. And now I want to work out M. Well, I need two points, like I did last time. Um, and then I'm going to draw a triangle. Now, I would I would prefer to go up and across, but I think it's going to go the other way. It is, isn't it? Um, but it goes up three, and then along one. Okay, so it goes up three, up three, along one. Uh, so that's three divided by one, which is going to give you three. All right, so there are two values of C and M. And at this point, you're pretty much done. You're just going to plug in the two values that you've currently got into this. So it's going to be y equals 3x minus 1. And then I'm just going to put those two numbers in. There you go. y is equal to 3x minus 1. All right, so I've taken the y-intercept from the graph, I've taken the gradient from the graph, and I've just plugged them into this. And, and that is your equation of your line, okay? It needs to have y and x in it because we're talking about a, a graph with x and y coordinate and the rest need to be numbers, which is what we've now got, okay? Let's look at another one. All right, so let's follow the same process as we had last time. So let's figure out where it crosses the, the y-axis. Well, it looks like it's crossing there to me. So the value of C is going to be 2. And then we're going to look at uh, its gradient. And again, hopefully you can see that it's going down. So let's get the triangle from there. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six going down, which is why it's minus, and then three going across, um, and that's going to give me minus six divided by three, which is minus two. All right, so they are my two values. And like before, I'm going to plug them in um, into the equation of the line formula, where I've got y equals m as gradient, which is minus two, x plus c, and c is, in this case is going to be just 2. All right, so that's it, done. All right, so that is the equation of the line. That's how to kind of put it all together, and that is why you learn y equals mx plus c, all right? But there's no point in learning y equals mx plus c if you don't know what m represents and how to figure out and what c represents, all right? So depending on the question you get will really determine what it is that you need to do, all right? 
if you feel the need to practice, visit mass-school.co.uk. There's a link down below uh, where there's loads of kind of practice questions based on that kind of, kind of topic. All right. Well, thanks for listening.